Are we about to see a big turning point in North Korea's denuclearization? Well, we could be around a month away from the most significant development in months as the last few days have ramped up the likelihood of a second ever US-North Korea summit next month. Looking at their latest stances for you, I'm Alex Jensen and you're watching Korea Now. Firstly, the United States does seem pretty optimistic generally, especially when considering President Donald Trump's mood. He said Sunday a lot of progress has been made and that he's looking forward to meeting Chairman Kim at the end of next month. He cited great meetings with North Korean representatives and he complained that the media is not giving us the credit for the tremendous progress we have made with North Korea. Trump himself hosted North Korean negotiator Kim Jong-chol in the US last week and there was apparently more progress in Sweden during trilateral three-day working level talks also involving South Korea that wrapped up Monday and which were described by the Swedish foreign ministry as a constructive conversation. Since then, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said in video remarks at the World Economic Forum in Davos that he believes we'll have another good marker at the end of February. He described the last few days as a little bit more progress and admitted there remains an awful lot of work to do. So Washington's made clear where it wants to end up, North Korea's full denuclearization, but Pompeo's comments also show the US recognizes there are many steps yet along the way towards achieving the denuclearization that was laid out in Singapore, referring to that very general commitment made during the first ever US-North Korea summit last June. This further implies the US may be ready to concede more to the North next month in a step-by-step -step process that's less blunt than repeating a demand for final, fully verifiable denuclearization. Pompeo also held out the prospect of private sector investment in the North, hinting at a future without sanctions, though sanctions relief seems unlikely for now, and it's hard to say how far the US is willing to compromise. North Korea is likely to be far more clear about what it wants than what the US is prepared to offer. Sanctions relief and a peace declaration formally closing the Korean War appear to be at the top of the North's demands. These would then open up the kind of regional cooperation that Pyongyang will want to control on its own terms. Recent propaganda articles from North Korean media have repeated criticisms of outside meddling and intervention. Perhaps then, the North will be hoping to entice the US into accepting a form of missile disarmament to reduce the threat to the US mainland in return for allowing Pyongyang to explore greater cooperation in this region. That said, South Korean Foreign Minister Kang Kyung-hwa was absolutely clear when she spoke with us this week that Seoul and Washington remain in close contact and have not shifted at all from their joint plan for peace and denuclearization. So Seoul would feel greatly betrayed if the US were to view this purely from a self-protection perspective. Then again, South Korea would no doubt welcome any step towards denuclearization that allows greater inter-Korean cooperation. As this has been what President Moon Jae-in has been calling for all along. The danger signs, particularly for conservative critics here, would be any lessening of America's military commitment to South Korea in return. The fear of being left isolated is greater among pessimists than their hope for cooperation. But President Moon has strongly urged the US to seize the moment with North Korea, promising all-out efforts to help ensure the success of the second summit. Though we may not know the outcome right now, Moon told top aides, one certain thing is that international political conditions surrounding the Korean Peninsula are changing rapidly. He added that this is the first opportunity that has been presented to us in 65 years since the end of the Korean War in 1953 and one that may never come again. We must take advantage of this opportunity, he said, no matter what. We must take this opportunity and peacefully resolve the North Korean nuclear issue.